Uh, welcome YouTubers and Hubson Xeno enthusiasts. In today's video we're going to be doing something a little different and this is as an experiment as an experiment that we can all participate in, a bit of a social experiment. And this has come about by um, some conversations online with people who suggest that there is um, some restriction on the Xeno in firmware. Not discussed this before, but this experiment shows that the restriction is because of the physical constraints of the quad and the path loss, in other words, the link budget. So uh, let me just describe what we're going to do here. The, the path loss um, is a function of the this formula here it describes it. So we've got 32.44, which is 4 pi over the speed of light, times the log of the frequency in megahertz, and the log of the distance in kilometers minus the gain of the transmitter and the gain of the receiver um, antennas. So we know that we can not alter 32.44's fixed constant. Um, we can't, in this instance, um, change the gain of the antennas without physically modifying them. And so the distance is going to be constrained by those to fixed um, points. Now the only thing we can alter in that formula is f which is the frequency and so that's what we're going to do here so we're not going to take off well, i've just set the quad to um channel 36 which is 5180 megahertz or 5.18 gigahertz and uh, we're not going to fly and see what sort of distance we get so some have asked before why i always do this by the way um i always check that the GPS coordinates are properly recorded in the quad, so in the unlikely event that I need to do a return to home, it actually comes back to where it took off from. So I always hit a return to home after going about 20 meters, and just ensure that it comes back overhead before I go any further. And if it flies off in a different direction, I'll obviously cancel that and come back and rearm the motors. Anyway, getting onto the path loss, if we calculate it with that calculation, um, at 5180 megahertz, which is what we're on currently. The path loss is about 106 decibels. And at the upper frequency, which we're going to test next, it's about 107 decibels. Um, so that's a 1 dB difference in path loss uh, over a 1 kilometer range. And uh, that equates to a range factor of about times 0.89. In other words, if I go with this first one and I get 1 kilometer, uh, before uh, we lose connection, then I would expect with the second flight that one kilometer would come down to 890 meters or thereabouts. It's not actually very um, specific. It's there's a lot of uh, external influences, um, reflections, multipath interference, all those sorts of things, and we're all flying. We're flying within the Fresnel zone at all times. But anyway, let's go out and um, have a look and do this and as I said anyone can perform this experiment and in fact if you do it'd be interesting to hear what your results are so if we go down the field to that um, copse of trees in the distance is about 1200 meters away and halfway up this field with a little tree here and the trees in the distance is about one kilometer so the thing to look for is the um, signal indicators uh, as soon as we see any flickering on those, that would indicate that there's a high error rate on the channel and it's likely to disconnect at any moment. Uh, so just watch those carefully. So we're going up to a thousand meters now. Excuse the dog. And we're getting flickering now, so I would expect it'll disconnect at any moment now. And there we go. Now the quote seems to still go further forward, so we lost the telemetry before the quad actually came to standstill. Now I'm just going to freeze that as the quad turns into return to home. And you notice that farm off to the right. Um, we're halfway up that field uh, when the quad turned around. So here we go. Um, the quad is returning and hopefully um, we'll regain uh, connectivity again on the control channel. And once we do that, it should stop. That looks like it stopped. We're just waiting, waiting, waiting. This is, by the way, is using um, uh, the IT 
0.3.8, which is the latest um, Wi-Fi firmware, and it is very problematic in more ways than one, and I'm still not sure why Hubson don't pull it. Uh, it's got very high hysteresis. Um, that's the length of time it takes for the control channels to reconnect. Um, and it's obviously got the very poor video, which you can actually see in this video. You'll see the pulsing signal, uh, the, the pulsing video, uh, especially on the darker shades. So I'm going out again. We're going to just try again, see if we can push it a bit further. And that was 1040 this time. It did seem to go quite a bit further. And there's return. I'll just freeze that again. And the farm, we're halfway up the field from that little lane on our right-hand side. And the farm is off to the right-hand side. So with that, I'll bring it back. I'm going to then change frequency um, to a much higher frequency. Uh, so we'll do that. We'll swap a new battery out. Why don't we bring it back while we're doing that? And we'll go out and check once again for the range. Okay, I could have cut this bit out, but um, I'll speed it up. I'm sure nobody wants to see a return to home in full detail. So we'll zip it all back. And um, now if there's no difference here, if, if it still cuts off um, in the second flight at one kilometer, then maybe there's some truth in the fact that there is a one kilometer limit. But of course, I've shown previously that I have no evidence of that because I've flown well over that distance by modifying other parameters uh, in that equation, uh, been out to two kilometers or more. So, bring it in for a quick land, and um, we will then whip the battery out and change the uh, the channel up to channel 165, and then take off and do this same test again. Okay, so we're going to go into the Wi-Fi settings and select 165. There we go, and the par the the quad will then restart itself. There we go, disconnected and reboot. Okay, off we go again then. So we're now on channel 165, and that's 5825 megahertz, 5.825 gigahertz. And the distance previously at 5180 megahertz was 1050. That was our best flight. Uh, although I do believe the telemetry um, gave up long before it got to the full distance. Um, but that minus 1 dB difference on path loss on this frequency should give us a range of D times 0.89, and D was 1050. So that calculates at 934 meters. So will we make 934, or will it make 1050? Will it make 1100? I don't know. Um, all we can do is go out and try. So do the normal um, return to home business, as we've changed the battery and rearmed the motors. And every time you rearm, it uh, sets a new home point. So, done that. And off we go into the distance. And uh, the same track. And the last time we were at 50 meters altitude. And I'll ensure that we're at 50 meters altitude for this one also.
Okay, the aircraft and the helicopters here on this video are um, uh, f flying in across the, the hills here, but well above um, the uh, the height that I'm flying at. They'll be well above the 400 foot limit, and um, they're going to a local airport about five miles away. But it's quite quite a lot of um, aircraft activity in this area, but it's always high up, and um, should never be low down within our flying zone. Anyway, back to the video and. Um, we're coming up to 800 meters. There's a little tree just below us, and we're, and we're at 50 meters high, and we're keeping a close eye on the signal indications. So we're looking for 1050 if there's no change in the. And there we're going flickering now, a little bit of a flicker, and we have lost it, and that looks like 931 meters. And look when we turn, I'll just freeze that. The farm this time is well off to our left hand side. We haven't reached anywhere close to that little lane which runs down to it. Um, so let's do it again, see if we can get out to the, the 1050. I've just moved the, um, the screen capture off to one side so you can see the farm. And now we're stuck in no man's land here. There we got into return to home again. And the quad is now going back. We seem to have regained signal so I'll try and push it back out again as I said previous this is the problem with this um, new firmware that pops in a release it's got loads of high ceresis and it's very finicky when it comes to reconnecting it's just so mar the signal so marginal at this um, distance that it just has real difficulty in establishing those channels again. Oh, all you can do is wait. Oh, there we go. We're well down the field now. Um, 860 meters. So you should be able to turn around now and head back out. Now we've got control back again. So we're looking to get out beyond the 931 meter mark that we had on the first attempt. So, once again, 904 was the best we could do. And there's the return to home. And again, the, that farm, just pause it briefly, was off to our left hand side, as opposed to the previous one, which was well off to the right hand side. So, I think that establishes that we are well down on the range at this frequency and it ties in quite closely with our calculated um, results that I think I calculated 934 meters was what we would expect it and that's darn close in my books so that's that test I have performed this test several times um, and it's always consistent and it follows the formula for the path loss uh, now people say that um, RF doesn't work like that, radio signals, they just don't cut off at a specific point. But what we're talking about here is not the radio signal itself. Um, we're actually talking about the digital connection, the TCP connection. Now, any of you that have a, a mobile phone or Bluetooth headphones or anything like that, uh, Bluetooth headphones are a classic example. You could put your phone on the table and walk away from it listening to music and you'll take one more step back and the music will cut out and you put one step forward and it'll be there again and that's because digital signals are basically on or off so once the error rate gets to a specific level the signal just is cut off and this is similar to the Wi-Fi connection that we have here the Wi-Fi connection is still there and I have confirmed that um, by going and looking at the quad at distance and you can see that the blue lights are still solid uh, but the control channel drops and the control channel normally drops before the video channel because it uses a different protocol anyway that's all for today I hope you enjoyed that if you like it give me the thumbs up and if you don't like it make a comment below and post your results of your own tests and now uh, we'll get a consensus then if this is unique to my quote or is this um, a feature that um, can be replicated that's what science is all about all the best, have a good day and uh, happy flying. Enjoy your Xenos.